Now I remember when this antenna first came out, it's the uh, TP-Link directional antenna, it's uh, 9 dBi of gain and at the time people were raving about this uh, particular antenna. It was designed to hook up to uh, a TP-Link router or any router really with a SMA connector, obviously TP-Link just push their routers of course and it was designed to uh, put a Wi-Fi signal in your home where you were getting a weak signal previously so if you wanted a Wi-Fi signal in something like a conservatory or in the garden then uh, you could hook this up to your uh, router and then uh, get that signal into the garden with this product and it was it had a lot of um, you know praises on uh, the online forums at the time I think this is getting on for over 10 years old now probably even a little bit uh, more than that but uh, I never did get hold of one and basically one of the reasons I never got hold of one this was uh, quite expensive at the time and I was myself making more and more of my uh, own antennas especially uh, etching them onto uh, PCB etc so I never really saw a need for me to get in hold of one of these but uh, this appeared uh, in uh, eBay and as I was searching and the guy had listed this four times and never sold it he, he had a best offer on there and I put a best offer price of uh, seven pound in there so he was asking a tenner for this and uh, we accepted on eight and I think the reason why it didn't sell so quick is because of all this yellowing on here it's designed to be mounted onto a wall as you can see here and it even comes with its original bracket and user guide and you can see the colour it should be on this side but we've got all this yellowing on here and it looks like somebody's been smoking in the same room as uh, the antenna now I don't think it is smoke the guy told me uh, it wasn't smoke and I have to agree with him I think this is uh, the sun that has caused this uh, bleaching here because he did have this mounted on the wall in his conservatory and the, another reason why I don't think it's uh, smoke is because it's really really hard to get rid of uh, the smell of smoke and for somebody like me who used to be quite a heavy smoker until uh, 10 years ago I've really got a keen uh, sense of smell when it comes to uh, smoke and this uh, passes the sniff test so it probably is the sun that's bleached it now as I say this was uh, hailed as a uh, brilliant antenna at the time if you could get hold of one and it came out after things like war driving and things like that had uh, you know had their time and people weren't interested in that sort of thing anymore I'm pretty sure if this was released uh, five years earlier in the uh, early 2000s um, they'd have sold a lot more of these units to uh, people who uh, enjoyed doing that driving around and picking up uh, open uh, access points but um, I've never seen inside one of these and I don't think there's any pictures of uh, the inside of this on uh, you know on the uh, internet and uh, another thing that's really good about this is it's only 9 dB but it has a really wide beam width so you know it's going to come out of there it's going to pick up a lot of access points because of that wide beam width but it's not going to be you know super super long range so if you just want to get coverage in your garden then uh, this is definitely going to do the job for an average size garden and to be fair that is what it was originally designed for so because uh, I'm interested on in seeing what's on the inside of this and I'm sure you are too let me crack this open and uh, we'll take a quick look so we've got four Phillips screws on the back so we'll need to unscrew those and they've probably got little clips as well holding the case together so that took some uh, opening up I really don't know why they need the uh, four Phillips screws on the back the clips do more than a good enough job holding this together and I've damaged it slightly around the sides trying to get it open but uh, here we can see the antenna and it's incredibly simple so as I said the uh, antenna itself is a really uh, simple design and all these fingerprints and marks that are on here would have been done when it would uh, have been assembled in the uh, factory because trust me nobody has been in here before not without damaging the case anyway but I've taken some uh, quick measurements and the reflector here at the back that's uh, 90 millimeters by 90 millimeters and the main driven element this piece here is uh, 54 millimeters by 44 millimeters so a really really 
simple design and the feed point for the main driven element is right on the end here. Now normally if I was uh, designing an antenna like this I would not put the feed point on the end here like that. What I would do is cut into the element itself like uh, I've done this quick drawer in here because what that enables you to do is lower the VSWR of this design. Now the VSWR of this antenna is 1.92 and uh, I do think if you cut into the design, the design slightly, put the feed point about here, you would be able to lower that slightly. But, uh, you know, as I say, um, this antenna does perform really, really well. I mean, you can't get many negative uh, reviews on this online. And uh, everybody who's ever had one, I think, are really, really pleased with it. So, you know, it, it must work for them. But they've just kept it as simple as they uh, possibly can. So let me remove these four screws here and then we can turn it over and then we can see how they've uh, fed the coax on the back. So here's the back of it then and uh, this is something that's uh, very interesting. Remember I said that uh, you know normally you would design this kind of driven element here because it's got the uh, lowest VSWR with a feed point uh, that's designed like this. I think what they've done at the back is uh, come out with this to uh, lower that VSWR so they didn't have to uh, do that shape on the uh, main driven element. If we look at the coax here, this is the uh, ground plane here. I mean, this is a little bit dirty, but this is the ground plane here, and that's where the ground plane makes contact there with uh, the reflector on here. And uh, then they've got this uh, either copper tape, I think it is, um, like this, and you can see the shape. And that would have been uh, done on purpose. It's not just a straight line going to the uh, feed point for the uh, main driven element. You've got this shape here and that feeds then directly into the uh, edge onto the uh, main driven element here. So I think this shape uh, going to the feed point of the signal wire is uh, what's uh, overcoming that to uh, get a lower VSWR. So they do not have to do this on the uh, main driven element at the front. Really, really interesting. I haven't seen anything like this before. Now, let me get some uh, rubbing alcohol and give this a clean because we can't really see what's going off here. But uh, let me clean it up and then we'll take a closer look. So now hopefully you can see it a little bit more clearly. We've got the outer braid here going uh, down onto the uh, that reflector. And then we've got the signal wire in the uh, coax itself, the uh, center core connected to this uh, shape along here and then it's soldered on down onto uh, another piece of wire that is then goes on to uh, connect to the main driven element so this is uh, a definite shape it's uh, actually doing something uh, with uh, you know the signal and uh, the antenna itself to uh, probably bring that VSWR down but it's very interesting I haven't seen a uh, feed like this before to overcome uh, the as I said that uh, ideal feed point for a driven element on an antenna like this but uh, obviously uh, it does work so very interesting and here down looking at the side we can see the PCB material for the reflector is quite thick stuff this uh, for the driven element is a piece of uh, metal you can see the feed point going there which is soldered onto the back here and the distance from the main driven element to the reflector is five millimeters so i'm going to pop this back in its case then and we'll do a little bit of a uh, wi-fi scan as i said it'll probably come up with uh, quite a few access points just down to its uh, wide beam width that it uses but uh, yeah it'll give you some idea of how just a simple antenna like this one works really really well so let's give this a uh, scan then from here in the lab We've loaded up 12, 13 access points there. The majority of them are nice and green. So it's not going to break any world records at uh, 8 dB, but, uh, you know, it's not doing too bad at all. And it's probably working, you know, along the same lines as a uh, single element by quad. And that works at about uh, 8, 9 dB. And if we have a look at this access point here, Bond Care, uh, it's just dropped off a bit now, but it was up at uh, 64%. So, you know, that's not too bad. Normally, I uh, say if uh, an antenna operates 
a directional antenna operates at uh, 50 or above then uh, we do take a look at it but 63% uh, not too bad at all and as I say it probably is working at around the 8 dB that it is claiming and I couldn't finish the video without giving it a uh, test on the bench so I've got it hooked up I've got a makeshift stand there and there it is hooked up to the uh, network analyzer and this is the output on the screen so here's the frequency response then on the network analyzer we've got this nice dip here I've put the cursor on uh, 2.43 gigahertz which is uh, typically uh, around the middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum but uh, we've got this nice curve here it's nice and wide as well which is typical of a uh, panel antenna uh, kind of design they are quite a uh, broadband design but uh, yeah that shows you why it works really really well in that Wi-Fi scan that we just did and one last thing I wanted to mention about this is the coaxial cable is a really good quality cable it's extremely stiff and that just shows that it's got a really tight uh, weave on its outer braid so it's going to be uh, extremely uh, low loss and that's something you see with uh, the main brands you know like uh, Belkin, TP-Link and uh, Alpha for instance you always get a good quality coax so an extremely simple design then uh, quite surprising how simple it uh, was but it uh, certainly did what it says uh, it would do on the tin and performs really well for uh, you know such a simple design I think in a future video again like I said um, in the middle of the video if we uh, take this design recreate it uh, possibly etching on PCBs and then uh, do the uh, second design that I talked about with a little slot on the main driven element and then uh, do a third one without any of those and we'll uh, test them on the network analyzer to show you know how uh, it brings down the VSWR I think that might be an interesting little video and we should be able to learn quite a lot from that so if you did enjoy this video please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one